Hope you're doing well today. I'm going to be doing a quick Zephyr 101 tidbit here to close out the 2020 year. It's been great, but I don't want to waste your time. Let's jump right into the slides. Bootloader signing key. There is some mystery around this, so I wanted to uh, share a little bit about it and um, help those who are, are at least on NCS to make it a little bit easier for you. So I'm focusing on NCS today, but uh, there are a few more steps involved for Vanilla Zephyr. If you'd like to see it, maybe I can break it down in a longer video. But for this case, I just wanted to set up a signing key for my NCS install. I'm already aware that NCS does all the fancy work for me in terms of uh, image signing and everything like that. So I just got to make sure I'm actually setting the correct key for that process. So it's important because if you care about securing your device, securing the bootloader, this is something you have to do before you ever deploy a device. Uh, it's done in a few steps, and once you're done, you're done. You don't have to do it again. But you do need to protect the key that gets generated. So we're uh, generating a key. We're using ECDSA, um, and uh, we're just saving that file. That file, that key.pem is where everything's going to go, so that's important. Uh, you can do this from the root of your project, so make sure that you're in the root, so you can, or you just got to change the prefix to however you get to your image tool Python script. And then I place it, uh, typically I just place it in my project, put it next to my CMake list, but you can do whatever you want in terms of where you want to place it. Just make sure that you update your CMake list to uh, accommodate for that. So in this case, uh, these are important entries here that will set the the, the MCU boot key file path, which is the full path to the file, the absolute path, and then we're also setting that kconfig value for config boot signature key file. Now this is important, so I tried playing around with um, the uh, child image overlays, and it wasn't working great. It was giving me some errors, so. This was actually the resolution for me is just to put the, these values in my CMake list, but they need to be done before the find underscore package uh, command or function in your CMake list because that will start loading Zephyr and everything else. So these values have to be set before you load Zephyr. Um, make sure you provide the correct path to your PM file. And then what I like to do is for to you know to escape any doubt that this is not going to work, uh, I just like del deleting the build folder and doing a build, a fresh build. So, if you did it correctly, you um, if you've been using Zephyr at all, you know that you've seen this message before, at least on NCS, and it does go away or should go away when you do this properly. So, as long as you've done it properly, you don't see this anymore. And what I like to do is. Uh, just making sure that when I build it and then I load it to the device, I'll flash it first, make sure that that bootloader has the correct key. Then I'll do a load over serial just to make sure that it will take the update. Sometimes I'll just change some text output to make sure, okay, cool. It took the update with the signed image from my key rather than the default key that comes with Zephyr. So in the end, you have your own signing certificate, which is great. Uh, you, that secures your OTA functionality and any um, local bootloader capabilities so over USB or uh, USB serial and uh, just keep your, your signing key secure it's not recommended to actually commit to git you want to keep that secure maybe you even in, on an air gap machine to make sure you know make sure that it's never going to be uh, compromised so just something to think about and uh, yeah if you like this content please feel free to subscribe hit that like button and hit that bell icon if you'd like to see more thanks again for being here and we'll see you on the next one